Hello and welcome to the second look. This is Back of the Net. Thanks for coming along. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. Anti-football, or was it clever from Nuno? Look, it was a bitty stop-stop game at Dean Court on Sunday. Certainly not Super Sunday. Thank God it wasn't televised. If you were abroad and watched it, I feel really sorry for you. Hopefully... You feel sorry for us because we had to watch it in the ground. It really wasn't a good game, was it? It was poor. It was poor, turgid, dull, boring. Um, we haven't had too many. So, um, yeah, hopefully it was a, a bit of a one-off. And as you kind of mentioned there, mate, I wonder if it was a little bit to do with Forrest's game plan as well. Um, and if they were looking to get a point, then it worked perfectly, didn't it? But, um, yeah, I think after a, a decent enough opening and obviously getting the goal... I wonder if there was a little bit from the players, because I felt it amongst the fan base, myself included, they thought, right, we're going to win this today. And it just never quite materialised. And it was, a uh, both managers said, didn't they? It was a real stop-start, bitty affair. And yeah, one to, one to not remember too much. There wasn't really any highlights that I can remember. So we'll do well to discuss it in um, some detail on the show, mate. But um, yeah, it's still a few talking points, I guess. But um, listen, if, if you don't play that well, make sure you don't lose the game. Hmm. Absolutely. So, AFC Bournemouth won Nottingham Forest won. It was Cliver. Oh, no. Was it Sinistera? No, it was Cliver. It was confirmed by the cameras. And then Hudson Adoy just equalised mm. for Forest just before half time. Myself and Tom, we're going to go through it. But we're also going to have your opinions as well because earlier on we put out a tweet to get your rants, your raves, your questions, your suggestions, anything involving the match itself. Whether you're watching today or you're listening, thanks for joining us. If you're listening on the audio pod, you could do us a massive favour by leaving a little review, cheeky cheeky five star if you can, whether you're on Spotify or Apple, all that stuff. But if you're on YouTube and you want to give us a hand, maybe you can do a couple of things. Big fat like. Click that to start off with. That'd be much appreciated. And then, yeah, just hit the subscribe when you're there. That would be awesome. Click the bell as well, and then you'll know when all the videos are out and you have to keep checking. So, yeah, I really appreciate any support you can give us. So, I don't know if you saw the vlog, but uh, I remember when me and Tiggs walked in, and you can hear in the background some woman mm. saying to a bloke, Happy New Year. <laughs> When's it too late to what say Happy New Year? But nevertheless... 2024 is upon us and look there's a a packed schedule of football loads of premier league action fa cup as well and look the best place to watch it is always at a green king sports pub yeah you can watch every game with the atmosphere it deserves down at your local green king sports pub so don't settle for this dodgy stream you know if it's on the telly it's also on at green king so just go and watch it on their massive, beautiful screens. How did you do on the Score King app this weekend? Any correct scores? I didn't get any bang on. I got a couple um, correct results. So a few 20% off in there because you still get that. Still get that 20% off your round if you uh, manage to get the result right. But no bang ons. And if I did have, got, if I had a got a bang on, sorry, then I would have got a free one. Mm. And their venues offer, look, if you're still doing dry January into February, are you? Who are you? I didn't. I mean, you could see from our social media that I that may have had a first. couple of horrendously branded beers, according to some. These beer snobs. I know. These beer snobs. Why are you drinking that? Because we like the taste of it, okay? Mm. But look, they have a load of low and no alcohol options as well. So if you're continuing your dry January into February, then you don't have to settle from a for a worse sports watching experience. It's all at your local Green King Sports Pub. Okay then, let's kick this bad boy off by looking at the league table right now. And look, it was it was horrendous. But the bonus is for both sides, we both moved up yeah. a place in the league. So we leapfrog Fulham. We're on twenty seven points mm. now, and Nottingham Forest as well. I mean, Luton Town fans were watching the game, watching Sorry. some dodgy streams, which you shouldn't be, Hatters fans, hoping mm -hmm. that we could do them a favour. And after three minutes, they would have been gleeful, or five minutes, whatever it was. But um, alas, Forest have got that extra point to go 16 but they have got this ffp thing they have hanging over their head now the mm. form table if you look at the last six us and forest mm. are actually fairly close together 12th and 13th respectively and it was a, it was something that i was looking at actually before the game tom and i was thinking look their league position isn't something to be overanalyzed here no. because when you look at the performances they've had yeah. 2024 has actually been 
pretty yeah. good for them, really. A few surprise results in there, if you want to call it that as well. I remember the Newcastle one, they were very impressive. Uh, but they're, they're inconsistent, as you'd expect, but they're, they're a decent outfit and yeah, they're starting to you know get scripts of what Nuno wants them to do. Um, a few a few additions and different changes we saw, debut for their goalkeeper, etc. Mm. And I'd probably say that the goalkeeper recently has let them down, so that's a good, yeah. good thing for him. And I thought he looked, without having too much to do, looked pretty composed and comfortable mm. in goal, which was a good start for, for them and him. Um, but yeah, it's, it's difficult to look at the league table too much. In the, in the Premier League, it's always going to be a tough game. Teams are going to set up differently. Sometimes I think we're more suited to play and some of the teams that open up a little bit more. And I thought their game plan was was pretty good if they if they wanted a point out of it. But um, I'm happy from, from where we are in terms of that form table, considering you know we've had Liverpool and Tottenham in that little run. So yeah, it's, it's not too bad from, from our perspective. Dropping points at home against a non-top six club or big six club means that unfortunately our position in the baseline track alert has not changed but we are now on plus six rather than what we would have been plus eight dropped two points there but look we are doing okay right then um we're mm. going to get stuck into this mate and uh we are going to have a look at some of the tweets along the way as well but um first things first one o'clock yeah team news came out by the way can't stand two o'clock fixtures on a Sunday. Do you know what? For multiple reasons. Firstly, yeah. if you want to go to a pub, yeah, most tough. of them open at what, 12? There are some that open a little yeah. bit earlier. They get time to prepare. Only 5.30 kickoffs on Saturdays, I don't like. I know you like them, but I don't. How do you plan your dinner time around that? Do you have an afternoon <laughs> dinner? Do you, have, do you have it at like no, nine o'clock when you get back home? Do whatever you do for a three o'clock, but you've got a couple of hours extra for a few more beers. That's, 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 that's how I do it normally, mate. And yeah. yeah, and it means you get to watch the. It's very rare that you get to see like uh, Soccer Saturday with the three o'clock. So yeah, you know, game. So I quite enjoy it for a for a change up. And I think we've got one in our next home, one, haven't we? Yeah, we have mm. the safe standing introduction, oh, Manchester yeah. City. But look, let's take a look at this yeah. team. Uh, what do you think of the Bournemouth side? It was. Uh, you're not overly unexpected, I suppose, was it? No, I think I said that I wondered if Kirkus might come in for Kelly just because. Um, just to rotate him because it's a quick turnaround and Kelly's been out injured, but good to see him start. Um, one shot that, that Sinny and Semenya played, but I don't, it's very rare that Tav gets left out when he's not injured. So that's probably a, one a rotation thing. We've, we've got some wingers there and we've had a lot of games, but also I think Tav's not quite been on it. So it's good that we've got the options to do that. And I think I did predict that Clive would come in for mm. Scott um, just because of his, his press and his, his pace, really. So not too many surprises. I think the... Um, Forest team was, was similar as well. I think Dave said it was virtually bang on. I think he ended up with my nudge saying that Danilo would start and he yeah, ended yeah. up not. Um, but apart from that, it was kind of what I expected from Forest as well. It was weird because before the game, um, I was in a tent um, before team news. It come up, you had Sky Sports, you know, the little team news stuff that comes up at the bottom. And they said, oh, Sells hasn't got his work permit. Right. So I went, oh, they haven't got the goal here. And then he was starting. So he obviously did get it. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, I knew um, we didn't have um, Unal, but... I thought that their goalkeeper might not have got it in time, but obviously he did. And um, there was actually, both teams had two goalies on the bench as well, which is a bit of a surprise. Yeah, and they made a few changes as well. Yeah. Uh, Taiwo was back. He didn't play in the last game for them, did he? No, uh, I think he was back in the last game. Oh, I don't know. He's, he's slowly been coming back. And yeah. What's the and minutes? But there was no wood, was there, anyway? No, th and they've missed Taiwo, I think. They have big time. I think in the context of the game, which obviously we'll talk about, I was re relieved in hindsight that Wood wasn't available because I think against 10 men, you could have chucked him on at the end and yeah. just put some balls in the box. Right. A bit like what we did at their place by bringing on Kiefer, didn't we? Um, but yeah, I did anticipate a Langer and Hudson Adoy coming back in because I appreciate against like a team like Arsenal, you maybe rotate that, but I think they wanted that pace on the break. And obviously, Hudson Adoy in particular, I thought, thought was quite good and took his goal obviously really well. It concerned me that we might have been a bit leggy though, because obviously we last played on Thursday. Yeah. They Forest were, on Tuesday, yeah, was exactly, it? Yeah. So they had that extra Outrageous, that 48 is. hours. Apparently, we got back at 3 a.m. From, from West Ham. I mean, that's a, pretty much the time that we got back, wasn't yeah, it? Off the much, train. So get on with it. Um, and you, well, played, yeah, you played last night as well. So do you know I, mean? I did play last night. Scored a number of goals. Well, Everything was good. Where were you? Uh, I just didn't fancy it. <laughs> what a terrible attitude. No, I just there. thought it was good. Sometimes it's good, I think, to, to rotate and give backup players a chance. And you managed to get the win. Didn't you last night? Okay, as long as you're not calling me back up, that's absolutely no. You're the stalwart. You have to pay, okay. but then sometimes you know you sprinkle in some players that maybe have not had enough game time. And me and Steve decided that we felt it was the right <laughs> chance, and you just won, even though we won by a lot more the week before. We're going to go through a match timeline very shortly. You'll notice that the second half is very stop-start compared to the first half. What time mm. did you get in the ground, Tom? What do you, were you in quite early? Uh, yeah, relatively, I suppose for me. Um, yeah, I was in with enough time anyway to to hear a great escape and stuff. Yeah, we know you're a big fan of that. But look, 
fast starts. That's what we want. And this is the thing, like Great Escape, it doesn't really get me going, but no. the team seems to get going. Yeah, it's it got not going good. against uh, West Ham fairly quickly. Got going again. Very early days, and um, really good whipped corner from Lewis Cook, by the way. Lewis and Sarah just leaping. Like, mm. yeah, whether it was going in, not sure. Clive was there to finish it off. But our set-piece delivery is improving, and Isn't I love it? the way that Lewis Cook's whipping in the corners. Not so much from the other side. I think Ryan Christie had a couple that yeah. weren't <laughs> unbelievable. But you did, taking a 1-0 lead, I was thinking, here we go. Floodgates, floodgates. Didn't quite transpire, but... No. Nice to have a fast start, which results in a goal. Yeah, and we did the same, as you said, on, on Thursday, mate. Uh, fast start. It's a little bit reminiscent to them days when we first came to the Premier League and we used to have fast start. Yeah. So that's always a good thing. But then obviously you go into why we're fading a little bit and it might be because of the intensity that Andoni wants to play, we maybe fade. I think he kind of briefly mentioned that he bought the subs on earlier than normal because he felt that and he wanted mm. to get a bit more energy in the team. So that makes sense. But yeah, it was a good start. Um, set piece, I think. Regardless of whether it's a few angles, I think, oh, is it going in? And then a few that I think it definitely is. I think it's going to hit the post. Either maybe, way. maybe, but either way, gone in. either way, I'd rather Clive just stick it in. Um, but the goal is ninety-five percent to the stair. Let's have a. He's really good in the air. He is, he's, yes. He's got a really good really leap. Springy. So yeah, that was. And he kept going for that near post um, run, which was which was nice and good to see that we're a threat from there because I thought it might be only when Scott takes them. Yeah. But as you say, Lewis putting a decent ball, mate, and. Yeah, fast start. And then I kind of thought, well, I'll just kick off from them now. Their game plan now is a little bit redundant yeah. to a degree because they have to score. Yeah. Um, so I thought it's going to suit us to the ground. Unfortunately, it didn't quite transpire. Were you waving your rally towel or rally flag mm. in the air? The ra- I, you know what? I love having them. It's great. But I don't like being told to wave your flags. They they put it on the scoreboard. Oh, like wave flag. Stuff, yeah. And in terms of contributing to the atmosphere, it does nothing. It does, it does nothing. It did against Leeds United. Yeah, we won that game, didn't it? But for some reason, this time, it did, and so a lot of Forest fans were, I mean, they, they were funny because they were criticising everything that we were doing, as you would. Yeah, what the effing hell was that when we were doing The Great Escape? Uh, we don't need a drum. We're yeah. not an Forest. We don't need a drum. Uh, okay. And then also, I didn't um, from where I was. you know, just laughing at our, our flags. That's we need to do something no, I that they go, ooh, that's no. Yeah, no, I don't. They've got to have a laugh about something and beat us at eight. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, I don't mind Forrest, but Fair. anyone that's saying that, because I've seen a lot of Bournemouth fans saying, oh, I want Forrest to go down, because a little bit of needle for some reason. Maybe try- I certainly don't, because we don't lose to them. No, exactly. We've got okay. a really good record against them, haven't we? It's, it's, it's kind of bizarre, because I don't think we played well um, at the weekend. I also don't think we played well in the home game last season, which was also one all. Mm. But for some reason, we seem to have a little bit of a bogey thing on yeah. them, don't we, at the moment? Um, but yeah, I absolutely was okay. It was kind of what it, it normally is. Rally flags, flannels, whatever you want to call them. I, I don't mind them as a novelty so like now and again like they did for the Leeds game just chuck them but I was like regular I don't really want it regular and I kind of wish the nothing against the drummers but I kind of wish the Great Escape was just now and again mix it up a bit I don't yeah. want it the same every time but it's what it is mate they're trying stuff so, uh, Toby Heaven and his poodle says everyone seems to take them home what do you all do with them do you bin them do you proudly display them well I put a couple of ours in the yeah. in our studio that we mm. use once every in a while mm. um, some people frame them I've heard mm, okay Stu Brownie's going to frame them because he, I saw that tweet that he said he uh, has them signed and stuff. Oh, that's good what chat. do you do with it? I've got one from um, the Leeds game, which I'm just keeping just because every time I look at it, I go, oh, yeah, we smashed Leeds, didn't we? Yeah, but what do you and do with it? It's just in the in a drawer, I think. Or oh, it might okay. be on the on my. Like, what do you do with yours? But but I'm not like now. I've got one, so I'm not going to get any more. Yeah, I collect them and stuff. But yeah, I've got one. So I, um, yeah. So so an early goal then, mate. Mm. Um, what is it about Nottingham Forest? Yeah. They always turn us around. They do. We were saying that because I, I straight away went, oh, they've done that with because obviously they must have done that because of where the key for Morgan was scored. Yeah, and then, and then Sam Surridge. Yeah, and then someone went, someone mentioned, I think it might be Rich actually said to me, oh, and Sam Surridge last season. They it, always do it. Who's telling him to do that? Well, again, this is not genuinely not trying to be like, um, have a dig and stuff, but if it kind of always works, you go, that's clever for them. They keep doing it. They never won. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> they haven't beat us in no. whatever it is. Well, now it's eight, but. But obviously home games, half of that. But yeah, it's. I, did, I'm, I always think, okay, it's fine doing stuff like that, little bits, but if you've done it a few times, it keeps like working. You go, do we need to bother next time? But it didn't bother me because I actually finally I mean, saw a score down because we keep scoring down at the 10 match. But so. when you want to face your own fans, I know they're on the, the side, but when you want to face your own fans in the second half, I don't know. I don't I mean, know. We are anyway, but... Maybe they just know that what we like to do, so they think well, we'll just do the opposite of what they tend to like to do. I, I don't know, yeah. but um, as I say, it hasn't worked for them at the moment, but I 
prefer not to be turned around. So I always just, I know it's a load of rubbish, but in my head, as soon as I turn around, I went, oh, that's it. <laughs> Can't win today, it's all going wrong. I hate it. I yeah, I don't like it. Do we still do the thing mm. where we used to do it at the old Dean Court? You used to clap the opposition keeper when he comes over, and if he claps back, you're like, eh, boo, or whatever, no? No, I don't think wank so. Wanker, wanker, yeah. right, no? I think we were trying to we give him... We used to do that. I think we were trying to give him a bit of stick because it was his first game for them, wasn't it? It was his debut. So I think there was a few times where the ball was coming back to him, we were trying to be a little bit, yeah. to try and make him nervy, but to his credit, I thought he was he was quite good for him. I think if Turner had, had been in goal, we might have, because we know he's a bit fragile yeah. at the moment. So We started off pressing... Really high, I thought, yeah. and didn't and didn't really give Forrest much room to breathe. But the, the more the half went on, the more that Forrest got back yeah. into it. Of course, it culminates in the goal at the end of the half. But uh, I suppose there's a lot to talk about in between that. A, a lot of early corners for AFC Bournemouth, some some good deliveries. But really, did we test the keeper much? No. I don't think either keeper was tested enough during the no. whole game. But um, yeah, we were doing bits well. And it was the final thing. Seemed to go wrong. but They I, probably had more chances than we did, really. I remember Taiwo... Yeah, because I remember Neto just having to gather a few. Yeah, that's right. I think Yatesy came in with a late yeah. shot. He had to dive to his left. Well, there one that took a massive... He, like, miskicked it, and mm. Neto just kept it in. And then he he burst through, I think it was Taiwo, burst past Sanessi, who jumped in. Yeah. And um, I thought it was a goal. And he tapped it straight at Neto, didn't he? It was like a back pass. He, um, he put it onto his yeah. right foot. And he, he tried to, like, slide roll it into the far corner, but he got all his best. Maybe we were it. fortunate there with him being um, not quite his sharpest. But um, yeah, I didn't think there was much chances. I liked our, I was saying it during the game, I think this is why he likes Cliver a lot because I thought his press is very, very good. And in that first half um, where Dom's you know, making the runs, it was Cine and Cliver were always in and around him. Mm. So if they were struggling to get out at times and they were just slicing it into out for throw-ins a lot. Yeah. Um, Kelly kept coming up that left, taking throw-ins all the time. I thought Cine was constantly causing problems without actually doing a pop from goal, obviously. Doing loads with it, mm. um, it would be it wouldn't be right of me to say that I like kind of being excited at football and entertaining football and then having a go when Cine's things weren't working because he gets you off your seat. Yeah, I like that sort of player that. and I kind of like the fact that he's come in to the side and gone. I'm going to try and take it and try and beat people, um, yeah. etc. But yeah, it wasn't quite happening. I think that you know, no excuse, but I think Christie taking an early bit of a blow. He said it was a bad dead leg. Um, which is good because it means he's, he said I'll be fine in a couple of days. It's funny, yeah. It's but a, he, you could tell quite early that he was still he's still running around like a lunatic, like a bit his touch and a few uh, things. He was losing the ball a lot, I thought, and I, you could tell he was a little bit limpy. Yeah, I I thought so. I mean, despite that, I think despite the fact that he was giving the ball away a lot, I think we just missed a bit of his grit and his bite in the definitely. second half a little bit, and the replacement that didn't, didn't really do much um, to help us out in that way. You mentioned Cliver just then and his press. I think. I suppose a byproduct of having to press a lot is that you're getting close to your markers and you're going in quite physically on them. Yeah. And look, we're we're going to talk about the the referee, um, mm. of course. And I think at the start, I think she tried to let the game flow quite mm. a bit to her credit. And sometimes there were some cynical fouls that she was letting go because she was playing the advantage, which I sort of understood. But then it seemed to be the more the match went on, it was more like the players were dictating. Yeah. how to ref the game almost. Lost a lot of control of the game, I felt. Yeah, I thought so. And it, I mean, it culminated, obviously, with what we're going to talk about a bit later on. But mm. uh, we're not going to focus too much on the ref. And look, there are multiple discussions on, on social media where this is being you know done to death already. Yeah. And the whole fast tracking of refs and you yeah, know that's... why it should and shouldn't be done, and it's not just her. There have been you know there have been other referees that um, mm. have been thrust into the limelight almost too quick and suffered as a result. But yeah, to me, watching that first half, I watched the whole first half back this morning and I didn't think there was anything overly bad. Oh, what, in terms of decision-making? Yeah, stuff like that? in the first half. Yeah, no, I agree. It lost the way. It, it, it's in the second half. Now, it's easy to sound salty when you're, oh, you know, because you're course. drawing a game instead of winning it. Um, and you're and, the team that has a red card. Yeah, exactly. But um, I felt, as, and like you said on your fan cam as well, I thought you were very good on that, by the way. Like, there wasn't any bias. There was not any bias at all. I don't think we're saying this because she was favouring Forrest over Bournemouth. I don't think that at all. I think in, we were probably lucky to end up yeah. with just 10 on the pitch yeah, because Clivert should have probably gone later on. Yeah, I've, I've seen um, a lot of um, comments on like our vlogging on the fan kind of stuff, which I don't understand. I'm trying not to kind of reply to people because I've seen a few and they go, 
you're all having to go at the ref. Why are you all having to go at the ref? You were lucky that Clive had one off. Well, that's proven my point then. We know, yeah. He should have gone. I'm not, that's, you're, you're literally proving our point. Yeah. I, I wasn't in any way saying that the ref costs us the game. Costs us winning, no chance. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not being funny. I mean, at, against Forest, I mean, look at the game that they played. Now that cost them the game. Oh yeah, big time. That was early um, when Body when that got sent off and that was a ridiculous decision and that cost them the game. This didn't cost us the game. I mean, tongue in cheek, we can go, oh, we've had two games with 10 men and look who done better. We had it for 15 minutes or whatever, um, including the stoppage time. But yeah, it, it wasn't that because Clive looked very, very lucky. Um, and as you kind of mentioned, mate, he, when he's doing that press, you've got to remember these players that are playing in that kind of role who are obviously told to press high mm. and get, as you say, get close to their markers and make tackles. But they're not actually used to tackling because they're attacking players. So they're, they're not very good at it. Um, and Cliver, he had just made another one. And I went, and then we started getting Scott ready. I get him off. And he started doing it again. I was thinking, oh my God. And I think then the Forest players, understandably, went over to the ref. But I think in general, it was just the game I, I personally felt, neither team was very, very good. Mm. But I felt that second half, the ref played a big part in making that game so bitty mm. because it wasn't flowing. It was ridiculously stop-start, but I don't think it needed to be that stop-start. Mm. And I just I just meant as a spectacle, it was really disappointing from, from the referee's display. But it didn't certainly didn't help us or help Forrest, in my opinion, at all. Um, it was just... Uh, for, a, for a spectacle, if I was a neutral, I'd go, God, that ref's really stopped that game from being a bit better. Um Obviously not all down the ref. Both teams have got a massive part to play in that. But but yeah, I think Clive was very, very lucky. Um, I mean, even when you look at it back, he barely touched him. But even Senesi flew in in, yeah, the, in the first half as well, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. Um, and yeah, there was, a, there was a few. I mean, that was a yellow, but... Yeah, there was just... I think Andoni did it really well, actually, because I was interested because I thought we haven't... He hasn't like moaned at all since he's been here. And I thought, well, I wonder what he's going to say. And he's very, very good, um, which I expected him to be, actually. He's always come across quite well. And he said that... There wasn't any major decisions in the game, but the game was stop-start. I don't really know why. I'd love to know the amount of time the ball was actually in play. I think it was less... I think second half, it was like the game was stopped every three minutes. That's unbelievable. Which is just not... And it was the most fouls in a Premier League game this season, I believe. Yeah, we've got the stats. Uh, yeah. We've, yeah, like we've actually got the stats on this. And, and it wasn't that type well. of game, that's what I mean. Yeah. It was just you, you. anyone was near him. It was, the game was just stopping all the time. And it was really hard for, as I say... Not, not just that. I mean, it, this is no disrespect. It, that's going to suit the away team because they they want it to be a bit more B because it's a good point and they can nick us on the cap. We couldn't get the game going because it yeah. kept stopping, and that's not trying to say there was any advantage to them, but it's just the way it was. But, but neither that, team could get into any sort of flow mode. But that's Nuno. That's a Nuno masterclass, then, isn't it? I mean, look, I think we were poor. Yeah. I think we were sloppy on the ball, sloppy in possession at times, and didn't really show that attacking like urge as much as we have done previously mm. and when it came to the final third I thought some of the ball you know the decisions that we were making yeah. were were poor uh, we weren't moving the ball quickly at all and as a result they were regrouping and they were able to get back and it and it was a very congested game um we'll we'll have a look at some of the stats and you, you know you mentioned the fouls and stuff so we had we had more shots than them according yeah. to who scored nine to eight um but one of the things i noticed the blocks that were being made now this is all over the pitch but we were getting in a number of shots but their blocking was good so defensively they were superb we were making as many fouls as i mean look at that 19 to 12 mate yeah but we lost the possession more than them as well we were like we were really sloppy but i think part of the fact that we were and also they had more touches than us more possession all that kind of stuff if part of the reason why i think we were so poor is just mm. they had us drilled they knew yeah. how to play us and look there's um there's a tweet that we had from someone that mm. that says teams are like your teams are almost finding us out we're just putting that on um, on screen now are they uh i think give i think if we can just try and give a little bit of credit to, to Forrest. i think that the I think that both times I've seen them, obviously we've happened to play Nuno both times, haven't we? And I mm. think from if they want to look at positives, I think from a Forest point of view, you go, you're in a scrap and you've got a manager that's got that team organised. They're very mm. organised. We, I've said this a number of times, but even against teams where we've got beat heavily, so Tottenham not long ago, for example, we're having nearly 30 shots. Mm. You know, we're, we're creating chances all the time and you stopped us from doing that. So that's got to be a positive. 
I think um, if they want to swing on a negative, you go, it's one of the poorest we've played and you didn't beat us. So it depends how they want to look at it. But I think if you're a team down at the bottom, you want to be organised, and they are. They're a lot more organised than Sheffield United. They're a lot more organised than Burnley, for example. So I think that's something they, they should should be happy with. I think this game in general, mate, um, neither team deserved to win, and they didn't. I think it was fitting that a game that was pretty dull, both goals were set pieces, even though theirs is a very good finish, it still yeah. comes from a set piece. And I thought their best two players were the centre-backs. And I thought our best two players, potentially, but were the centre-backs. I thought the centre-backs, two teams, and even the back four in the hole, were good. Murillo had Dom Murillo was brilliant, number, didn't he? And I thought, I can't pronounce his name, apologies. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Babadelli. The lad they got from Norwich. I thought them two were brilliant. And I thought, considering he got a relatively early yellow, I thought Sinesi handled that well and there's a few times he stepped in with the ball really well and Zabani I thought was absolutely colossal at the back mm. so I think it was a game where if we want to try and spin it a little bit and not to be how boring it was go actually maybe it's a game where we go okay the defences were quite good though let's mm. give them credit because we always talk about the excitingness particularly with Andoni's style I think if I want to try and kind of grab something positive from the game and go we look solid. I think Lloyd Kelly and Adam Smith yeah. being backs really helped that as well. I think Neto looked, without having loads to do, looked a lot more comfortable, composed, caught a few things. And we weren't quite at our levels. We weren't at our levels. So if you're not at your levels, and Forrest might say the same, I don't know. Obviously, they both play a different style. But if you're not at your levels, then be, be solid. And I thought both mm. teams were that. And if you're not at your levels, don't lose the football match. Yeah. Both teams did that, mate. So it wasn't a good spectacle, but both teams would probably go, just take the point and get home. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, hudson Adoy then, yeah. It was um, a goal. free kick that came in and Christie was trying to dribble it out almost. So yeah. uh, there were a few times so where just, really cleared, yeah. just get rid, just get rid. And um, it was a great finish. Uh, I really like the way he just took this extra touch really just good. to forge, a, gap. Uh, you know, like another gap. Over, I think it was Zabani was the yeah, nearest defender, been. and really superb yeah, finish. I wouldn't, I wouldn't class it in the worldy category, yeah. but it was a sublime finish all the same. And so that was one all. But even still, I had faith that we would come out. And I know we were shooting the other way, but I, I honestly thought that there was going to be a winner. And I said to Tiggs, "This game ain't finishing like this. There's no way." So sure. Uh, turns out, turns out it did finish yeah. like that. We're gonna just have a look at the match timeline. If you watch it on YouTube, you can mm. see that. Uh, yes, it was a. Uh, a stop starty mm. first half we all know that the second half it was coffee it was spluttery it was all <laughs> sorts it was not good I mean there were a number of substitution yeah. windows there were yellow cards there were free kicks there were red cards yes. one red card yeah there was mate it was yeah as you say I think we obviously made the change at half time which actually I said on fan cams because so many went down he obviously had a knock but Andonia said it was tactical and he's fine so which is a positive but um, I understood that change um, I think that Tav probably deserved to come out of the team, but Semenya didn't do enough in the first half, so I understood that change. Didn't really work. And then, as Andoni said, we seem to be losing our intensity, so he tried to make a couple more changes, which I think were the right changes as well. So I was happy with that. But as you say, the game just never flowed at all. Nothing really happened of, of much note until um, till the red card, to be honest, mate. Um, yeah, like I say, a few little stop-start stuff, a few little half kind of moments in and around each other's box but nothing really to, to discuss until um you know we got a red card just to have something to talk about right? mm. a lot of people on social media have been saying about tavs not quite at the levels a couple of comments they as you dropped. can see and i think this demonstrates it really i mean you can see here our passing network mm. um it's all on the left hand side you can see there's nothing really on the right hand side these stats are from 12 mm. but Compare that, I think, you know, Forrest is, is more enhanced and, yeah. and look at that. That I mean that's really good and that's how it should look. And there's a there's a certainly a symmetricality yeah. about that. And the danger creation as well shows that on our left side mm. was where it was happening. The darker it is, the better it is. But um that said, that said, Tav did get into some good positions on that right side. Just yeah. his delivery won at it. He, no. he even had a free kick where mm. he he sort of blazed it over everyone as well. What do you think the I don't want to say issue, but he's just not quite at those levels at the moment. Just going for a patch, and he really is. It always happens. Yeah, he's going for a patch, I think. It's one of them things. I think, you know, along with Billing, who obviously we'll come on to, were just so pivotal to us last season. Um, just like a pair of them, the amount of blimmin' vital goals they scored. But unfortunately, it's just one of them things at the moment. I just don't think it's happening for Tav, probably since the turn of the year, um, to be honest. Um, yeah, not quite happening for him. And then I think it's then, then it starts playing on your mind a bit it's not quite happening for you and maybe you make the wrong decisions which I think he did a few times trying to take a man on when he didn't need to or making the the wrong pass but I, I don't mind too much if you lose as you said a bit of the 
uh, symmetrical kind of side of your your attackingness if your left side is doing well because you think Sydney's having a good game today, he's causing problems, they get out to him. I love um, the fact that we make that. up words on this yeah, programme, clinicality saying. and attackingness. attackingness. I love that. I th- it feels like that could be a word. Write the dictionary, rewrite uh-huh. the dictionary, mate. But yeah, I think I think when it's, I thought Kelly was good and Sinister was causing problems. So I was kind of, I didn't mind that we mm. use that a little bit more. But yeah, one of the things, I think Semenya and Tav have been so good for us and both of them are just not quite, it's just not happening at the moment. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we've got Favre, or however you want to pronounce yeah. it, coming into the club now. You've got Sinny now hitting some form. Dan goes back. So we've still got options, mate, and they'll know that. So, yeah, I think we'll be fine. And, and players have a little bit of a dip now and again. Um, yeah, you've only got to look at someone like Ryan Christie and the way he's turned it around. So it can happen. But, yeah, she's not quite happening for Tav at the moment, unfortunately. But um, I'm convinced it'll be fine. When watching the second half back, yeah, I, I remember Dave on fan cam saying that he, he thought that Forrest maybe just shaded it. And I, I think they probably did. What, second half? Yeah, they had, a, they had a few breakaways where I just thought, oh my goodness, they could do... And they seemed to have some space where like, where we didn't. I don't know, mm. it was just... It was so weird. We were, we were more playing. open than they were. And Absolutely. I think that's, we so were. When, when our moves were breaking down, they looked like they could be in. Mm. Whereas when their moves were breaking down, they were straight back in their mm. kind of defensive um, system and the way Nuno sets them up. So I, I do think it looked on the eye like they could break a bit better. Yeah. Um, they probably did. But um, yeah, fortunately for us, and also because of some good defending, let's give ourselves some credit, I thought... We marshalled it well when they tried to break, particularly that last kind of, I mean, it was longer than you think because of the added time, kind of 10, 15 minutes with 10. I thought we defended it well. But um, but yeah, they, they, look, they looked a bit more organising and knowing what they were doing in the second half, I think. Yeah. So the substitutions didn't really have the effect no. that uh, we wanted, one of which was obviously Phil Belling, who on 84 minutes, I think Alex Scott was in possession of the ball and he slightly gave it away and they managed to break. It was hudson Doyle with the ball. And then Billing runs behind now. He's um, he's usually the nemesis for Forrest, scoring yeah, true. worldies. And so they would have been absolutely chuffed to bits to see that the referee brandished the red card as he, he's, you know, he tried to cynically bring him down to stop just, the flow of possession. I think he was looking just to clip the defender's heels, good, he? um, which itself wouldn't have been a red. But I think it's the fact that studs basically Did were on the backside of the ankle. And Could you see that at the time because you're on the 10 mark? Could you see that it looked like that could be a red? It didn't look like it at all. I just thought it was a, it was a yeah. you know, just a clip, in which case there's no way that's a I red. Of him. course it's a yellow. I clapped him because I thought they're breaking it. That's a brilliant yellow. Yeah, but you I've... didn't know that his feet no. were like... Yeah, that yeah. and that obviously is is enough for uh, a referee to go. And you know why don't you just grab? A I shirt or I'm honestly can't get my head around why one like you said just t- I, that's what I said straight away. Just put a shirt. I mean, but is it just a case of just uh, like misfortunate? Yeah, sorry, unfortunate mistiming. Literally, why like, is he going like that? Just just trip him up. But you know what it is when when there's an accidental stride or you, yeah, you sort yeah. of just all he was trying to do was clip him, and it's just that like the way it worked, it's it just, just really happened bad. to. It was just a, a bad yeah, it was really bad. I mean, it was yeah. I, just, I can't get me around him not being able to just trip someone over. We didn't miss him though when he went. Oh, I mean, I know that we probably had different. about what seven minutes. So there was another thirteen. They had more of the ball, the but we didn't. Well, I think we suddenly then were like, well, we can't win now. But so, yeah, but, but we weren't. But then we pushed forward a couple of times, and there were a few it. moments like you well, know, we had a corner again, mate. Yeah, you know, Dongo had a chance on the uh, yeah. left hand side. He forged a space and, and put the ball in, and a few little it didn't really moments. The but no, it didn't impact the game too much, as I say. I mean, um, it was dreadful, wasn't it? It was, it was a really, ball. really bad spectacle. And I, yeah. you know, and I think, yeah, it's a weird one to, to judge. Really, we we certainly weren't weren't as good. I think um, the only thing that surprised because we've said it, I think we've been fair in our assessment that the game plan and stuff from Forest was was decent. The only thing that surprised me is I thought at their place. They went down to 10 men early, didn't they, with Bolly? Mm. I thought they were better. Yeah, they were. And we were fortunate to win that game. Um, it was only Dom Solanke brilliance. I think we spoke to Dave, didn't we, on the preview. I said, if you had had Solanke, you win that game. He was the difference on the day. But they had 10 men virtually the whole game, and I thought they were more of a threat, mm. which was weird. Um, but, yeah, it was just a bad game. Both teams uh, weren't, weren't great with the ball, but both teams defended pretty resolutely. Um, and yeah, I think even with a time out, I wasn't really afraid of. I didn't think they'd score. I don't think they opened us up once when they went when we went down to ten. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would have. I was a little bit annoyed that the ref blew the whistle when we got a corner, uh, yeah. when the time was up by about two seconds. So I thought, well, surely we deserve a corner because that doesn't matter if you got ten men. You just get a good set piece, yeah, and Scott yeah. was on the pitch. Thought you never know. So um, yeah, that was a bit frustrating. But I, yeah, it was. It was just. It was. It was rank. I think credit should be paid to Forrest, though. I mean, we, we have sort of labelled it anti-football on the on the thumbnail and stuff, and that's 
get an it, it's, it's not it's not necessarily for that but that's what some some people on on social media are saying. I think it's very astute really I mean also the work mm. rate that they were I mean you saw them you know getting behind the ball at all times they were it felt like they were winning every second ball and usually yeah. that's one thing that we've always done every time we've um, tended to play it into channels which we weren't doing as much no. because we didn't mix up the game as much as I thought but usually it'd be a long ball from Zabani to try to hit Solanke or whatever if it bounces back we're usually picking it up but yeah, there seemed to be a lot of space between you know Dom yeah. and our midfield which meant that there was no one there and um, we were you know we were struggling to impose ourselves well you know they picked it up they I yeah. think you know what you know they'll be all right this season if they don't get a point to that. If they don't get a point to that. Um, yeah, I think they'll, uh, they've will they certainly got enough. I think, um, as I say, it depends how you, it depends how you look at it. From a, from a Forest perspective, I think they should, um, on one hand, go, actually, away at Bournemouth, who are doing well this season. Um, that's a decent point. And there wasn't much in the game at all. So, But then, on the other hand, if Forest fans want to know, that was the poorest we've played and you didn't beat us. So it depends how they look at it. What I will say is I've, I was impressed with them defensively. As I've already mentioned, I thought the centre-halves were brilliant. And if you've got a good back four and centre-halves in particular, you've got a good chance of staying up in this league because you're not going yeah. to concede as many as a lot of the other teams. And we've already seen you know, come, some of the goals that Sheffield United and Burnley in particular are conceding. I don't see that from Forrest now. Mm. The only thing that maybe disappointed me, if you were a neutral, say, watching the game, was didn't think Gibbs-White, who is my one that I'm worried about, didn't have one of his best games mm. for, for his levels. Yeah. He's normally the one that you worry about. I didn't think he was as good. Hudson Dives took his goal well. Didn't think Alanga was great. Um, and Alan he's not quite at it yet. But as I say, defensively very, very good. Um, and I thought, yeah, so I, I thought that really helped them. A few little cameos that come on, Rainer and stuff will probably help them as well. Nice touches. Mm. So, so yeah, I think they've got, you, you could see even with their subs, you thought they've got a decent enough squad actually. And they've got a decent balance to, to be, you, you wouldn't, I, I wouldn't put my money on them going down. No. But the game itself, it was, it's one to forget, isn't it? And from a Forest perspective, one to forget that they've gone away from home in the Premier League and got a point. Yeah. Um, and as you said, mate, they would have been, I, I said it at the time, when Billing's coming on, I bet they're thinking, oh no, he always scores against us. Mm. And he ends up getting sent off. Um, do you think there was a little bit of gamesmanship from them? With the, they seem to be going down quite a yeah. lot and milking any... Yeah, free no, kick that's gone on, not not rolling around or whatever, but it, it certainly <laughs> used up a lot of time. Yeah, annoy, annoying from our perspective, very annoying. I, I don't, I want my team to do that away from home if you're trying to get a point personally. Mm. Um, just and I thought the ref, as we've kind of mentioned, bought into that too much. But you you want to slowly get Bournemouth this season. I think Nuno knows and Forrest know. Like to be quite attacking, like to be quite fast, high tempo. If you can slow that down, then do it. Um, and they did that quite well, I felt. He was, he was like that at Wolves, wasn't he? Really, yeah, yeah. he was, you know, very defensively resolute, and yeah. that's what he's turning Forest into now. And I think with the players there, you know, they get they've, they've got, got pace in. on the break as well. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, they have. So and now he is not fresh yet. No, I think when he a few more games under his belt, um, yeah, I do think that I think they'll probably have enough mate points deductions. Aside, who was obviously. your um, who was your man of the match? Um, I debated a few. Like, Who's your statistical man of the match? Oh, yes, because we'll do the who scored one. It's gonna be well, it's gonna be silly, I guess. Oh, well, it could be Clive. He actually got the goal, didn't he? Silly because of take ons and the goal slash assist might get it. I personally don't think he'd get it on the stat kind of thing. I, as I said on um, kind of player ratings on the Telegram group for people that you know donate a bit of money to us. Sorry, what's that? It's called Telegram, Sam. People come in. If is it is it like WhatsApp? Yeah, yeah, very yeah. similar to what's yeah, yeah. But yeah, I do a player rating show on there. Do you? Yeah. What, I'll, after every game? Yeah, I do it the next day where I'll dissect it a little bit more. What, for the people that pay monthly to back of the net to help support us? Bang on, actually, yeah. Oh, okay. That's exactly what I do. Um, and I was kind of actually put on our Instagram as well. I kind of went, oh, because they didn't announce one, did they, at the game? A man of the match. They didn't. And they didn't put one on Twitter. I don't know why. I heard Michael Matthews Jewelers, but I think that's them sponsoring it. Yeah, I, I didn't hear it anyway if they did. And I think Cine just edged it on there. I personally think when a game's that dull, you look at defensively, and I gave it to Zabani. Um, I thought Lewis Cook was decent as well. So statistically, you're going for, statistically... It's got to be Cine. It's Sinistera, 7.8. Well done, you. You're welcome. Elsewhere, Hudson and yeah, Yates, uh, 7.6 there. Mm. Uh, Billing, lowest scoring Lower. player, 5.1, <laughs> obviously. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, think that's, I think that's fair. I think um, it, was, it was a weird one, but I think some of the players that recently for us have been getting the standouts. Ryan Christie, Dom Solanke in particular, weren't at their levels and that's probably had a massive, massive impact on why we weren't as, as free-flowing. But um, I think uh, credit to our centre-halves personally. I thought they were good. Um, and the back four in, in particular. 
Yeah, absolutely right. We're going to go through a few of your tweets just to see whether we've covered this off. Mm. Fingers crossed uh, we have earlier today. We asked for your rants, remarks, plus points, negatives. In fact, any AFC Bournemouth related questions. Mm. Uh, Tav is getting a lot of stick, so I'd like to commend him on his dirty dancing lift of oh, Bruno yeah. Tavares. It was a nine from me, says <laughs> Guy. Yeah, that's good. Uh, when was that? I can't remember. Yeah, it kind of like got into a tangle and he kind of lifted him up. But yeah, we kind of mentioned about, about Tav at the moment. Not quite happening for him, but I love the guy and really think he'll, he'll come back. Simon says, we're 12th, but we need to keep moving forward. Looking up is a different battle. It's one we need to win, and it'll take time to evolve further. Mm. A couple of players off it since the winter break, but it'll come back. Spring is around the corner, and that's when we always warm up. Yeah, I love that from you. Um, that, that was probably, I think you said it on the pre the teams or something yeah that was probably the first game in a while that we were expected to win yes I agree so i think that. that that always enhances the feeling of disappointment of course doesn't it? of course especially when you don't play to your levels and again we've not met with any disrespect but i think there's part of us that thinks if we had hit our levels we would have won that game you know what i mean but sometimes when you, like, you don't play brilliant against liverpool you go well even if we did they might have had too much whereas we we could have won that game so yeah disappointing but um as i say matt i think pfft, First time that I expected a win and we didn't yeah. win it in a long time. Uh, Colin Byrne, by the way, check out his vlog. Great mm. watch that. Uh, I'll put the link in the card if I remember to do it. Hopefully I do. Click it because then you can see a vlog from his perspective. But his rants, not seen tactics from an away side like that since Liga 1. Burn, Colin, burn. Yeah, uh, okay. Remarks, referee poor, but Forest tactics made it difficult. Yeah, yeah. plus, plus point, Christie again. Although uh, I want to give a shout out to his shot early in the first half, he did. He pulled it wide. I think it was a corner when it deflected. Yeah. Wasn't good Look, go Ryan. Away. We all love you now. You've been unbelievable, and I'd probably say up over Don for player of the season. It's got to be between them two, right? If if you had to do it now, but just don't just give up on shooting. Just don't shoot. Uh, you know what? Uh, by no, his by his shoot. standards, uh, a poor game. But like I said a couple of weeks ago, he's probably earned the right to have a poor game. And I think what's what's noticeable is Christie has a slightly below par game. We're not as good. Yeah, and also, and, an and even I would have, you know, obviously, you know, injury aside, if it was something that he could have medically carried on with, you know, limp or dead leg, whatever, I'd have almost rather had him on I'd, because yeah. I thought I don't know the our intensity just went as soon as he went off the pitch. Poor, poorest performance since the first half against QPR when Christie wasn't on the pitch. He's yeah. that pivotal at the moment. Paul Kenwood said, irritable requires significant stamina and we look tired on Sunday. Also, like I've just said, actually, noticeable that if you take out Christie, the press is ineffective and teams play around us. We need more high energy players. Teams will target Ryan every game. Billing, he says, was unlucky. No intent, which I agree with. I don't think that was intent. No. Just a mistake. A mistake, but it's, a, it's, it's one that deserved a red card. It was a mistake that I think I get why he got sent off. Um, yeah, but it was it was poor for men. But yeah, I agree with that. I think that's why you know, listen, we've we've done all right, and we can't start moaning about needing more players and stuff. But there are times in games when we've got a few injuries like we have got, and you think he needs real like for like off the bench because they're going to tire. Mm-hmm. And I think at the moment, you know, you see Favre and Una, they might you know once they get up to speed. But um, yeah, we we need we need to make changes because the intensity is gonna. Is gonna drop because of what he's asking them to do. Is it like um who is it uh, the Barnsley manager with Ishmael? Was he? Uh, was he yeah, about, yeah, he's like, Watford now. Isn't he? he made all his changes at half time. Yeah, like literally travel. made right yeah. for. I think we do it around sixty. Yeah, but um, I, you know, I did like the fact that even though the subs were relatively ineffective, the intent was there to yes. win the game. Yes. So that's always nice Agreed. to see. Ashley said uh, a rant from him. The ref had a huge impact on the scoreline. There was a lack of game flow. Absolutely, the red card. I think it was harsh, but I've seen them given. Yep. Plus point, we don't lose games easily anymore against the lower table sides. We don't lose games. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Fair, f- fair point. And, but negative, need to create more chances from open play yeah. against teams that play direct and sit deep. I was going to say that. I think it's good point. better from... I mean, so what, we've had two games in the same week, both ending 1-1 draws. And three of the goals are set pieces, aren't they? Because um, they got a penalty, West Ham. And then both in this game were set pieces. Mm. And, but I want to be a little bit more positive because I think it'd be quite easy and understandable for people to say, well, in them two games, we scored from a corner and from a Calvin Phillips mistake. Yeah. So that does, that's if you want to look at it from a negative point of view because we're not creating enough. What I would say is the reason Calvin Phillips makes a mistake is because of how good our press was. Yeah, true, um, true. And that is how Andoni wants to score goals because yeah. Christie was on him, Solanke was there and we scored the goal. But I agree. I think we're cre- we've been creating a lot this season and in turn of the year, not cre- I think... I think what's happened is, because we all know Dom's getting the goals, but 
I always felt a threat with Tav, with Semenya. You know, yeah. Because they dropped a little bit, obviously Semenya's been at AFCON as well, um, and Tav's dropped his levels, I think it's just affecting us uh, a little bit. And obviously we've had Aarons and Kirkes out, who I think, as much as I think the right, the right and left back were very, very good um, for us at the weekend, and Smith and Kelly, Kirkes and Aarons will get forward more and give us a lot more width. And I think having both of them out, Kirk is obviously yeah. slowly coming back, has impacted that. I, I think that, yeah, you think of some of the collections that Tav and Aaron's were, were, were building and Semenyo and Kirk at times, I think we've lost that a little bit because we've had to change it quite a lot. We had a break. We had a kind of winter break, but it didn't really feel like it. What with, you know, Ratara out there, Semenyo out yeah, there, yeah. and then other players coming back from injury. I don't think we properly benefited no. from it. And Aaron Kay, Aaron Kay alludes to that saying, what's happened to Tav recently? Yeah. We've spoke about him. He also mentioned Semenyo as well. Uh, is there burnout within some of our players, do you think? Yeah, probably a little bit. Um, do you reckon? Yeah, maybe, maybe potentially. I think especially it's no um, kind of coincidence that it's them YPEN that are asked to do a lot of pressing. It's quite nice that we're getting back to, I mean, FA Cup aside, mm. it's quite nice that we're just getting back to weekly yeah. fixtures now. Yeah, and also you've got, I think that's why a lot of people were, because I think on one hand people were saying, yeah, Brooks needs minutes, etc. But I think that's why a lot of people, because they were going, if the others aren't on it, which they're not at the moment, Brooks could then get more minutes. But, you know, is is what it is. I think I think they'll come back. And we have, and let's look at it from another point of view. Well, Sinny taking his chance now. You know, he wasn't playing at all when we were doing well, was he really? So that's, that's a positive. And, and Matara's back and hopefully he can, you know, take... When, when players are not quite at it, like Tav and Semenya, who have been two of our standouts at the start of the season, if they're not at it, it just gives opportunity for others to to maybe grab the shirt. And I also think Clive can move wide again. I think that could happen yeah. soon. Morgan said, how long was the ball in play? It didn't feel, feel like much at all in the second half. Yeah, I know Morgan. Hmm. Um, he said a fair result. We should have won the West Ham game, but now he's looking forward to Fulham yeah. saying it's a big game. And it is a big game really, because you were saying on the Telegram group that if, mm. we, if we don't get a result there or, or lose it, you're then looking at our stats for 2014. It's how people word it. 2014, 2024 in the Premier the League. Yeah. In a very different way. Well, the the, the kind of general consensus and um, kind of taglines will be, Bournemouth won this year. Mm. Bournemouth won this year. If we win, but people go, Bournemouth lost in three. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it, it, that's just, just the way it goes. So I think psychologically it's a big game. And, and, and you also look at that league table now. Us and Fulham are, are right next to each other. Mm. Um, they're not having the best season, but also should be fine. Um, so yeah, we've... Again, with Forrest, we've got a decent record at Craven Cottage, mate, so I'm, I'm confident of that. And I think people are also looking that then we've got Newcastle, then Man City. Mm. So they're, they're really tough games. So I think people are looking at Fulham like, we need to win this. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much it. A few other comments just talking about points we've made already, yeah. including the stop-start nature of the game. I don't think it helps us. Our whole kind of ethos is just having a flow and constantly mm. going for it when it's being broken up so often, we, we, we just couldn't get anything going. Yeah. Billing, yeah. Uh, it's going to be impossible for him to break into the squad for the rest of the season <sighs> after his red card. Yeah. Possibly right. I mean, I, mean, I want to maybe. say that we, I mean, we've all got to be careful because look at, Christie's a very prime example um, that it was only a year ago I thought he went play for us again. And now he's most pivotal player. And Billing, you know, to, to himself as well, has had that before. We thought yeah, Billing's got to right. go and he's been unbelievable. I mean, last season he was almost a difference maker to keep us up but at the moment he's clearly down the packing order in the way we play and all that a suspension like that's going to do is put him even further down um, and he seems like the type of player without knowing him obviously that wants to obviously be playing football like everyone does and will we'll think which I agree with he should be playing football so it'd be interesting one if he's one that's maybe looked at moving on at the end of the season particularly mm. I was looking at I was chatting to Mark Ducks actually so he's really pivotal to Gary Neal and the way we played last season I think, you know, Wolves won't really say it, I can't see them keeping hold of Neto because no. he's too good. If they, and they would get a lot of money for him. Yeah. Could Gary Neil maybe look at Billing? Just because I think he fits the way Gary plays yeah, a little bit more. Perhaps. Where he can play in that midfield and just get Good close check. to the striker. Um, not sure, but it was just a thought. And I know that Eddie has always liked them as well. And if Newcastle sell a few, just wouldn't shock me. Um, and at the moment, with the way Andoni plays, is Billing going to fit into that? I'm not convinced. So for any Forest fans watching, uh, mm. let's do, you know, let's do the thought. Is it, is it was it anti football, Tom, or was it clever from Nuno? Which you know, which way is your thumb going? Yeah, like that. see, there's oh, a little yeah. angle. Yeah, angle up. A, a, there's a little angle. There. I'm not going to be. All, I'm not going to be. I, all, but I want to. I think part you deserve of a bit of credit. Yeah, it's you part, like Dave too much to be horrible at Forest. Now. Now I've met Dave. I just can't. And I, to be fair, I don't. It to, it's, it's one of them. I want to. 
I could come on there and just wind them all up and say things, um, you know, about lo- loads of stuff to to wind them up. But I can't wind them up. But they oh, they never beat us, mate. But um, okay, okay. but no, the fact of the matter is. It's one of the poorest I've seen us. So if that happens, you've got to go, well, maybe the opposition's game plan works. Yeah. And there you go. And um, yeah, it's what it is, mate. And I love Dave, so why not? Give him a little bit of credit anyway. Can Thanks. we start talking about that game now? Yeah, you know, we've got we've got stuff coming up on Back of the Net, by the way. Uh, Premier League show is yeah. out tomorrow. That reviews everything that happened over the weekend, including the game that's going on right now, if you're watching on a Monday night, Brentford Man City. Oh, yeah. Huge for Man City that they get a... Yeah. Uh, it's their title, surely, now, after what Liverpool... Oh, they're Arsenal, mm. why not? You, you never... Don't you call what, out Villa. It makes it exciting there, at least. Up. Spurs fans probably still think they can win it. Nah, not going to happen. Um, and then Wednesday, we've got a, a special little interview filmed at the pair oh, with yeah. the AFC Bournemouth legend, who I was inside on Sunday. You lucky man. I was in I'm the Ted McDougall uh, stuff. I was going to make more jokes. Say I, I'm in, I was inside another legend and all yeah, that yeah, stuff because yeah. I don't really, I rarely go in the Ted Mac. But yeah, um, that, that's, a, that's a good one. That's one to look forward to. He's a top guy. He was at the and game. He, he was at the game, wasn't he? Yeah. And, and you know what? I, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to uh, like call it at this point, but all mm. I'm going to say mm. is Ted McDougall roasted back of the net. Big time on the video. He yeah. roasts you. It does. We all we all get an absolute roasting. So yeah. we're looking forward to sharing that with you. And then we're into our Fulham content. If mm. you're if you're holding on for the West Ham away day oh, yeah. review, we're going to do a double header with Fulham. So uh, next sense. week we'll get both of them out, and yeah. then uh, we'll see where those two end up. Um, thanks for listening. If you have done on the audio pod, and thanks for thanks for watching. It's been a it's been a pleasure. Just a boring game to cover. I don't know how we've done it for this long mate but good one mate but yeah listen didn't look, if you can't win don't lose up the cherries up the cherries see you later <laughs> <laughs> oh. never want to talk about that game again